In this video, we will learn to solve quadratic equations by using the quadratic formula. And we'll talk about the discriminant, which is part of the quadratic formula. All right, um, first try to give you the big picture. This is the third method that I've taught you to um, solve an equation like this. The first method we learned, we learned to solve by factoring and uh, we factor this thing down and we said x squared was x times x and 8 could be factored as 2 times 4 and then we said to ourselves now inner plus outer equals middle inner we have 2x outer we have 4x we can get 6x out of this if both of the signs are positive and that does make 8 um, but then we set these factors equal to zero. So we went x plus two equals zero and x plus four equals zero. Subtracting two from both sides, we got, uh, and subtracting four from both sides, we got x equals negative two and we got x equals negative 4. And we found that these were the x-intercepts, or the zeros of the function. Um, so that was the first, first method that we learned to solve by factoring. Um, but we learned another method. This method was called solving by completing the square. And for that, this is the one where we did half of the middle squared, uh, but first we needed to move this number out of the way, because this is not the right number that we want. So, um, you know, we would subtract 8 from both sides like that. And uh, so that would give us x squared plus 6x, leave a space, is equal to negative 8. Then it was time to do half the middle squared. Half of this is 3. 3 squared is 9. So we would have to add 9 to both sides. Okay. And then uh, this would factor down as uh, the same thing twice. In this case, x plus 3 times x plus 3. And over here, that's equal to 1. And since it's the same thing twice, we could easily write this as x plus 3 squared. Uh, but then we would take the square root of both sides, not forgetting the plus or minus. And we would get x plus 3 equals plus or minus 1. Then we would subtract 3 from both sides. All right, and we'd put it in the front. Okay, so that would give us All right, I'm going to put it over here. That gives us x equals negative 3 plus or minus 1. Um, but that meant negative 3 plus 1 or <clears throat> negative 3 minus 1. Well, negative 3 plus 1 uh, was negative 2. And negative 3 minus 1 was negative 4. OK, so we have negative 2 or negative 4. And that is the same thing we got by the previous method. OK, and now we are learning a third method called using the quadratic formula. Um, now, you might be wondering why we're learning uh, three methods of basically doing the same thing. And, uh, well, for one thing, the first method we learned, uh, which was factoring, um, okay, so we have uh, our three methods are factoring, completing the square, and now quadratic whoops I left out a, uh, I'll have to redo it fine fine leave me alone quadratic formula okay so why three different methods to uh, solve the same type of problem well factoring first of all factoring only works for problems that are factorable so um, you know if this had been a 
one small change if this had been a negative 8 all of a sudden uh, this would not be factorable anymore so we couldn't use factoring for a non factorable problem so we definitely need more methods than that okay so fine why not just completing the square well doing this whole half the middle squared thing um, is only convenient when the middle term is even all right as soon as this is something odd you know like a five or something like that all of a sudden doing half of the middle is very difficult um, half the middle squared now we got fractions everywhere it's a mess okay so but the quadratic formula um, you can really use the quadratic formula for anything um, but when a problem is factorable it's probably quicker to factor so those are some of the reasons why we have more than one so now let's obviously take a closer look at this new method called the quadratic formula here's the quadratic formula there's a little song uh, to help you remember it it goes to the same tune as Frere Jaca which is a French nursery rhyme but anyway it goes opposite of B opposite of B plus or minus square root plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC B squared minus 4AC all over 2A all over 2A alright so that will help you remember you can just rewind and play that again as often as you want you're welcome now this part of the quadratic formula under here has a special name it's called the discriminant okay and it does not include the radical symbol it's just the b squared minus 4ac part it's called the discriminant and um, I recommend uh, always doing the discriminant first and then uh, doing the rest of the quadratic formula second alright also um, the discriminant is going to tell you at a glance uh, how many solutions you have and whether they're real or imaginary here's what I mean alright the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is either going to turn out to be positive or it's going to turn out to be zero or it's going to turn out to be negative those are the only possibilities so um, if, uh, if the discriminant is positive which is the most common um, that means you're dealing with a parabola that's going to be intersecting the x-axis twice so there are going to be two zeros um, and that equation is going to have two real solutions alright so for example if the discriminant was 16 then uh, you would have 6 plus or minus 4 alright and 6 plus 4 is 10 divided by 2 is 5 6 minus 4 is 2 divided by 2 is 1 so you would get your two real solutions would be 5 or 1 on the other hand um, if the discriminant is 0 um, that means you're uh, looking at a parabola that's only touching the x-axis once so you have one real solution now when you're looking at an example let's say the discriminant was zero then uh, for in this example you would have six plus or minus the square root of zero and uh, you know the square root of zero is just zero and doing plus or minus zero doesn't really change anything so it's just the numerator would just be six so you would just have 6 over 2 which would just be 3 so it, it makes sense that um, if the discriminant is 0 you're only going to have one solution because the way we get two solutions is by adding and subtracting this number um, but if it's 0 you're not really adding or subtracting anything so you're just going to be left with the one solution um, and finally if the discriminant is negative um, then you're looking at a situation where the parabola is not touching the x-axis at all so there will be no real solutions um, but instead we will have two imaginary solutions so for example um, notice how this makes common sense if you understand that imaginary numbers come from having a negative number underneath a radical okay and uh, of course the entire discriminant you know we looked at the, our uh, quadratic formula here the discriminant is under a radical so of course if the discriminant is uh, a negative number then uh, of course you're gonna have a negative number under a radical and that's gonna give you I so for example if the discriminant was uh, negative 16 the square root of negative 16 is 4I okay right there there's your imaginary number 
and you could simplify this particular case down a bit um, but that i is not going to go away so you have your two imaginary solutions three plus two i and three minus two i okay so this is how the discriminant can tell you at a glance uh, you know just by looking at is it positive is it zero is it negative if it's positive you'll have your two real solutions like so if it's zero you'll have your one real solution like this and of course if it's negative um, you're gonna have a negative under the radical so you're gonna have imaginary solutions no real solutions okay um, so that is a whole lot of background and it's been 10 minutes and I, we haven't done one problem on this actual assignment but that is as it should be because sometimes you gotta learn first alright so for the first few problems we're just supposed to find the discriminant and state the number and type of solutions so we're just analyzing the discriminant only so remember the discriminant is simply b squared minus 4ac so for this problem um, you know a is 1 b is negative 6 and c is 10 so that means the discriminant is a b squared so that's negative 6 squared must use parentheses if you're going to trust a calculator um, minus 4 a c obviously I didn't really need to type the the 1 okay so this is the discriminant alright so there it is kabam negative 4 is the discriminant okay so the discriminant is negative 4 and as we discussed before if you have a negative discriminant that means you're gonna have no real solutions you'll have two imaginary solutions okay so we'll just put two imaginary all right um, look at number two for problem number two um, a is one b is six and c is nine so the discriminant is b squared minus four a c so that means we will have six squared minus four times one times nine alright there it is zero we have a discriminant of zero ladies and gentlemen okay so fine the discriminant is zero and uh, as we saw earlier if the discriminant is zero that means we have one real solution okay let's look at number three okay so once again for problem number three a is one b is six and c is eight so the discriminant is b squared minus four a c so that is six squared minus four times one times eight yeah so there it is kabam um, the discriminant is four alright specifically we're talking about a positive four when the discriminant is positive that's when we're having this situation we have two real solutions okay so two real solutions um, that's what we have okay um, this might be a good place to stop this video while we're just dealing with the discriminant as not nah, you know what let's do one problem of actually solving using the quadratic formula alright and but this will be the last problem in this video and we'll do some more practice in the next video so we're gonna solve using the quadratic formula um, but like I said the first thing I would do is calculate the discriminant first okay so the discriminant 
uh, we're talking about our b squared minus 4ac. All right, um, so a in this case is 1, b is 2, and c is 5. So the discriminant is going to be um, 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5. All right, so there it is right there. And the discriminant is negative 16. OK, so there is the discriminant that we will be using. Now, the rest of the quadratic formula, um, let's not forget, looks like this. So opposite of b, plus or minus square root, discriminant goes here, all over 2a. So keep that in your mind. OK, so opposite of b. So opposite of b, so negative 2, plus or minus square root, all right? Discriminant goes here, I'll come back to that, all over 2a. Well, a is 1, so 2a is just 2. Now the discriminant goes here, okay, which is negative 16. I see I've got that negative under the radical, so I know I'm going to have uh, two imaginary solutions. So um, watch out for that. So uh, keeping this going for a moment, I've got negative 2 plus or minus. Now I know I'm going to have an i, so uh, forget about that for a second. Square root of 16 is 4 though, um, so that means this is going to be 4i and then the rest of it. Okay, now um, notice that all three of these numbers are divisible by something. Okay, they share a common factor. So when all three numbers have a common factor, you're going to go ahead and divide by that. So they're all divisible by two. It has to be all three. I can't just do uh, these two. It has to be all three or nothing. Um, so we'll divide all of these by two and see what we get. Um, and what we get is Um, we get x equals negative 1 plus or minus 2i. All right? And uh, so um, I'm going to let you guys start to leave it in this form. Uh, but still, please remember that this means um, negative 1 plus 2i, and it means uh, negative 1 minus 2i. Uh, but in this unit, I'm going to let you leave it as negative 1 plus or minus 2i. Okay, um, so that is it for problem number four. That's the answer, and uh, we will stop the video here. Uh, but we'll have more practice with the quadratic formula coming up in the next video. All right, I'll see you guys on the next video.